many things I do, I tend to do it to excess, but I'll try not to do so with this, uh, with this speech. I'll try and keep it as short and succinct as possible. Deputy Vice, Vice Chancellor, staff, members, graduates and guests, thank you so much for the incredibly generous introductions and bestowing me with this wonderful, wonderful honour. I am so thrilled to be standing up here today, receiving this uh, honorary doctorate from a city that myself and my family are so proud to call home. Can I begin by congratulating all the graduates? A university graduation is a hugely significant occasion and I'm honored to share this very special day with you and your families. As Professor Brady said, I was fortunate to be able to make a career out of sheer masochism, otherwise known as Ironman Triathlon. And when people meet a professional athlete, I think they assume that they've been doing sport since they were this high. Not me. I wasn't really known for my sporting prowess. In fact, the only thing I, I, um, I actually won was the, the local uh, village fancy dress competition. Incidentally, I was dressed as a starfish, and my brother was dressed as a daffodil. I beat him. Um, <laughs> hardly the stuff of, of sporting legends. Growing up, I channeled all of my drive, all of my determination, some would say obsessive compulsiveness, into academia. All I wanted to do was to get good results at school and then go to university. I think I must have ticked the wrong box, though, on the UCAS form, because I did end up at the University of Birmingham instead of Bristol, but at least now I have a degree from the university that actually matters, so thank you um, <laughs> for that. And I remember my dad dropping me off on my first day at Birmingham, and he gave me a few words of advice. And they were to seize every opportunity and make your mark for all the right reasons. And I tried to heed his wise words then, and I still do even now. And I reflect back at the time I spent at university, at Birmingham and then later at Manchester where I did my MA, and I realised once again that they really were my foundation. Those years at university shaped me into the person and then the athlete that I was to become. It was, it was university that gave me the opportunity to pursue my first passion, which was international development. It was my educational foundation that gave me the opportunity to go and live and work in Nepal, managing water and sanitation projects. And it was in Nepal that I first started doing endurance sports, mountain biking, um, cycling 1,200 kilometers across the, across the Himalayas via Everest Base Camp. And in 2006, someone persuaded me to try a triathlon. I entered a few races, they went really well. And it was at that point in 2006 that I had a big decision to make, and that was whether or not to become a professional athlete. And some would think it was an easy decision, but for me it wasn't. I was scared. I was scared of the unknown, I was scared of failure, I was scared of what people might, might think. I was scared about this relatively unknown sport of triathlon. But I never, ever want to look back and think, what if? I never want to be left wondering what might have been. So although I was scared of the unknown, I decided in early 2007 to leave my job and become a professional triathlete. Never in a million years did I imagine that I would win my first world championships that year. Never did I believe that I could break world records and then go on to win three more world championship crowns. As an athlete and as a person, I surpassed any limits that I set myself and achieved more than I could ever have thought possible. And looking back, my life has already taken so many twists and turns. In many ways, it's like a tree, branching in so many wonderful ways. And my time at university is like the trunk of that tree. So much more than an institute of academia, its walls nurtured and supported me and gave me all a platform, sorry, gave me a platform to succeed. And now I'm a mother to a wonderful one-year-old daughter. And I think, what are the key life lessons that I want to impart to her, apart from the fact that she should go to Bristol instead of Birmingham? <laughs> First, find your passion. So many people go through, go through life not knowing what truly makes them happy. Think about it. 
Think about what lights your fire, what makes your heart sing, and then follow that passion as best you can. Second, don't be afraid to try. If you don't try, you will never, ever know. If I'd not dared to try triathlon, I would never be standing up here today as four-time Ironman world champion. Look any fears you have in the face, take a chance, and that way you will never, ever look back and think, what if? And third, and finally, you really can surpass any limits that you might set on yourself. Back in 2012, I met a young boy, he was three years old, he was called JJ. And the first thing he said to me was, Chrissy, do you want to race? JJ didn't care that I was world champion. He certainly didn't care that he was only three. And JJ also didn't care that he didn't have any legs. He was a double leg amputee. To JJ and to most children, there are no limits. The world is full of wonder. And I wish we as adults could retain that sense of optimism and that sense of wonder and that sense of there being no limits to what we can achieve. In closing, I'd like to reiterate my thanks to the University of Bristol for bestowing me with this incredible, incredible honour and wish you all every success as you carve out your own paths and create your own life trees. And in the words of my father, who sits here today, seize every single opportunity and make your mark on the world for all the right reasons.